Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. Oh, I didn't get it right. Um, you try. Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. Or, or Sheth. Seth? Meth. Meth. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, I hope world. his daughter wasn't Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did that with Pastor Jeff one time. <laughs> Call him Meth. <laughs> meth. Yeah. Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. I can't even do it. You said it late into the last episode. Let's do it three times in a row. Well, hello, everyone. Yeah. Welcome to today's episode of The Bible. Wait, what? Yes. Uh, 2 Samuel 2 Samuel 9, 9 with Phil, and we're yeah. in the – this is Thursday's episode. We've got yeah. one to go after this, and we're looking at David's kindness, kindness to Mephibosheth, 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 Mephibosheth. I did it three times well, in a row. Well done. So, All right. Take it away. Tell us a story, Phil. So Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. <laughs> Just call him Meth. Meth, meth or Meth. <laughs> call him Meth. This dude, who was he? He was – actually, he was the grandson of Saul, who was David's um, – yeah, or oh, Saul was – yeah, and David were um, – Saul was trying to kill David and Saul was the original um, king of Israel. And so David was thinking about, okay, I'm now king and it's like I loved Jonathan who is Saul's son so much that we had a pact that we would look after each other. Yeah. We would serve each other and um, be one kind with each other. So they were more than just best of mates. They were like something – on top of that. Yeah. Because the, yeah. the, the the agreement they made originally, the agreement they made was Jonathan, who was the heir to the throne, he was the prince who should have been on the throne. He he knew that God had called David mm. and he said to David, I want to be by your side. Mm. You know, he knew that. Now, sadly, yeah. because he did, couldn't break himself from his father, he ended up dying on Mount Gilboa at the same time as Saul did. Um, which was sad because he could have been and probably would have been a much better number two than Joab ever was. Yeah. Well, Stay tuned for next week's episodes to see how screwed up Joab was. But I actually think that's sad because Dave, Jonathan should have been David's right-hand man. Yes. Um, however, in the middle of that that uh, stuff going on in First Samuel there, it's uh, they make this agreement and Jonathan says, swear to me that you will show kindness to my family as I have shown kindness to yours. Yeah. That's the agreement they make and that's what David's picking up on mm-hmm. here. After he's settled, after he's expanded his kingdom, all that stuff that – We've just read in the previous chapters. Now he's going to show, hey, I, I made a commitment to John. Mm. I had to do something about that. Yeah. And he says, who can I show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And so he finds this um, bloke, Mephibosheth. Yeah. That was Seth. Um, and finds out that he's still alive. So not all. And he's one of Jonathan's sons. sons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because all um, everybody else is basically dead. That's mm. what I'm reading, um, uh, and so he finds this one and um, gets told that yes, there is one of John's sons still alive, but he's a cripple. And King asks, "Where is he?" And um, this servant tells him he's in this place called Lodabar. And You're smiling at me. Tell Lodabar. me about Lodabar. Is and that what you're going to say? Yes, because. Um, probably on YouTube somewhere. I'm sure T.D. Jakes, um, Bishop T.D. Jakes has probably preached this numerous times. Yeah. But he explains this passage in a brilliant way. So we can't, well, um, we can't do it justice compared to what he does. Oh, no. But he goes through and he says, um, Lodabar. It was like, well, names in Bible have significant meaning. I'm just thinking <laughs> that he's in a Lodabar, as in... The bar is low. <laughs> it's a load of bar. Okay, in the about, Aussie version. The Aussie uh, version. The bar's pretty low for this yeah. guy. He well, is. I looked it up and it um, refers to a place of nothing. Wow. Uh, there is nothing. It's not even really worth mentioning there's something special about it. It is below the bar. So this one who would have been an heir to the throne, yeah. if Saul was still on the throne, he was in the lineage of... But he's Jonathan. We don't know if it's Jonathan's first son. I'd probably, I'd probably tell you somewhere. But basically, he's he's in the lineage on yeah. the throne, and now he's in a place of nothingness. Yeah. Wow. So he's yeah, he's gone from the high of the highs down to the low of lows in that sense. So um, yeah, um, and he's at the did I the home of Machia, son of Amiel. Did you yeah. look that up? I I didn't say much about that, but I was thinking Mephibosheth didn't even own any property. Mm-hmm. He was in the house of a male. Mm. Um, so he, he's he got nothing. So he's, he's, he's Adam banished from the garden. Yeah. 
he's, he had everything mm. and he's lost it all. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I was like, wow. wow, this is, he's, he's really hitting the rock bottom. Yep. Crippled. So being crippled, you couldn't work. The bar is low. Um, so he's relying on this bloke to provide him with everything. Yeah. Um, which would be really hard for I mean, a man of those day, in that day, in that culture where the man is to help provide. Oh, totally. Um, um, I have to work and, and it's it, a conjunction. And it say here, is it say somewhere that he was crippled because in they rushed to pick him up? And um, it is, um, is it's in, in another. It's, it's in Chronicles it's, version, is it, or something? It is written somewhere else that he was, um, yeah. He His was nurse dropped. picked him up and dropped him. Yes. In the rush to get out. Yes, yeah. I think it's in the must be in the Chronicles yeah. version. Yeah, so he wasn't yeah. born cripple. No, he was injured. Injured as a young boy. Yeah, yeah. It's um, a sad story. To, it is, but it's our story. Yeah. That's what I love about this story. Mm. Anyway, I'm I'm stealing yeah. your thunder. Carry no, on. You're doing fine. great. That's fine. Um, so David sort of says, "Well, let's let's bring him back. I want to meet him. I want to get to know him." And so when he came to David, the Pufa chef bowed low in great fear, because. Um, Wouldn't you? Yeah. It's like my you just, going to the king who killed my grandfather and uh, my father sort of thing, like in war. Um, well, is David going to do the same thing to me? If, 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 uh, Chef had no idea what was going on. So. And as we said in the end of the last episode, it was normal practice for a king to yeah. single out anyone. Everyone. Yeah. And so David doesn't know that Mef is crippled. So a normal practice for most kings would be to say, hey, is there anyone left of the house of Saul so I can kill him? Yeah. That would have been to make sure that he's not going to pose a threat down the track to my kingdom and my power. Yeah. And instead the narrative is turned on its head here. This is – and David is – David is a type – I think that's what Nick T.D. Jake said in his message. Mm. David's a type of Christ here. It is. Because he – and we are the Mephibosheth. He he turns the whole narrative on his head – and he actually elevates the one who potentially could be a threat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and also it's like, well, yeah, technically, well, we're the ones that should be, uh, because of our sin and all that, we could be the ones that would be uh, killed off um, because we deserve it. We deserve it. Um, We've actually a threat to God's kingdom. kingdom. If we carry on the way yeah, we, yeah. we behave, we are a threat to his kingdom. Yeah. We make his, we do the opposite of his kingdom. Yeah. And yet he's saying, is there anyone I can find right. from that screwed up mess down there yeah. who I can show yeah, favour to, to. Wow. for my son's sake? <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great uh, narrative. Yeah. Um, and David explains to Mephibosheth that um, I've come to fulfil a vow that I made to your father that I will um, – and he restored him to the land that he lost. Yeah, he put him back in Eden. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, and um, Sheth fell to the ground before the king and said, should the king show sh- such kindness to a dead dog like me? He even viewed himself yeah. as worthless. I was just low. looking at the meaning of the name of Fibosheth, and it actually the, – the meaning of the name of Fibosheth alone, it means from the m- mouth of shame. Mm, wow. Wow. So, from the mouth of shame. So this guy's got some serious baggage. esteem problems, some serious <laughs> baggage. But don't yeah. we all? Yes. Mm. Got lots of baggage. And yeah. so he, he was like, well, why why show kindness to me? And um, David goes, well, no, I'm giving you back your land um, and um, got your servants. But he says, but Mephibosheth, you will live with me in the palace. Oh, that's a great um, elevation. Yes. Uh, not in a dungeon, not no. locked away in Tower of London to make sure you don't pose, yeah. pose a threat to my kingdom. Yeah. You'll sit at my table. Mm. Wow. Will. Yeah. They, Mephibosheth ate regularly like one of the king's own sons. Mm. Oh, that's, I love this story. Yeah. Something about David's heart in this. It's just like one of his highlight moments where he just taps into something of the nature of our Lord. Mm. It was. I just had to re- um, remembered one thing that T.D. Jakes has said. Mephibosheth, he was crippled in both feet. It says he was crippled in both feet, and he moved and lived at the palace. He was still crippled. He was still crippled. This. That's uh, the bit of that message that I remember the most. Yeah. Yeah. It uh, wasn't like God took away his brokenness, his crippledness. No. He sat. When you, can you remember how he said it? He was like, when you go to a banquet, or like us sitting at the we're table, sitting at the table with a tablecloth right we've now. We've got a tablecloth. It is, tablecloth is there and it's draped over the edge. 
our feet are crippled, but they're underneath the table. You can't see our feet. You that, can see the top half of me that's not so crippled. Cool. We are like everybody else. I feel like I want to jump and shout like I did when yeah. you listened to that message. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. That so we are sees still us. broken. And even in our brokenness, we sit at the table like a royal son. Yeah. And the tablecloth of God's blessing covers this over is, our crippledness. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. So we don't have to live in our crippleness in that sense. Beautiful. Because we can live in the glory of God yeah. as a whole. Yep. Uh, and this is back to what I was saying about getting good theology of suffering because old school Pentecostalism denied the crippledness and the brokenness. Yeah. And I think that led to pride and arrogance or the opposite. It led to some kind of when you'd face your brokenness, you'd go, there's something wrong with me or this doesn't, this faith thing doesn't work and you kick it out. Yeah. But that understanding is that we remain broken. We're getting we're getting healed, but there's always something in us in us of our nature that needs to become less and less. Yeah. And we're on a journey to wholeness, but we're never going to get completely whole this side of the resurrection. And an acknowledgement of that, and an acknowledgement that we sit at the table, mm. and that we access we have access. We're seated at the right hand beside Jesus. We're seated in heavenly places with mm. Jesus, and we have access to that power. And it's that but God mentality. No matter how broken we are, we still have access to royal authority to use it and experience God's goodness in our life while we remain broken. Mm. Yeah. It's that juxtaposition. Juxtaposition. Yeah. Upside down kingdom. Mm. Yep, for sure. It's a great story. It's worth meditating on. Maybe it's probably out there somewhere. If you Google T.D. Jakes Mephibosheth, I'm sure it would come up because, like you say, you probably would have preached it multiple times. And not everyone likes a good, you know, that style of (laughs) preaching. And I I don't think I could do it every Sunday, but – Every now and then, it's it's good just to build your faith up, and mm. and, and this is what that story is so good about. Yes. It finishes with and Mephibosheth, who was crippled in both feet, lived in Jerusalem, and ate regularly at the king's table. I remember him saying he did not stop being crippled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is encouragement yeah. to me. I'm still mm. crippled. Yeah, I've been rereading, uh, re-listening to a book that I did several years ago um, by Dan Allender. Dan Allender is a Christian psychotherapist and. Um, He's very big on inner healing. And this was a book that Pastor Steve White recommended to me many years ago called Leading with a Limp. Okay. No, and it's based on Jacob's limp. Yep. But it is essentially this. It's the fact that we all carry brokenness. We, we all have a limp. Yeah. And, and and our greatest strength is found in acknowledging that limp and leading our lives and leading others from that place of brokenness rather than trying to cover over yeah. or ignore that place of brokenness. Getting comfortable with the fact that we're crippled and then sitting at the table and going, but God, I can lead from the brokenness. It keeps us humble. Yeah. It's a superb book. Anyone who wants to read it, um, rec- you know, to take it, I recommend that book. It, it's it was really transforming to me when I did it ten years ago, and I've just been listening to it the last mm. week or so, and it's been it's been really revolutionary again for me. Yeah, leading with a limp by Dan mm. Allender. Mm. Mm. Listen to that one. All right, yeah. that's Sounds a great good. story. Um, you can spend a lot of time in it. We won't, but hopefully we've whet people's appetite yeah. for, to go and do some study and prayer. All right, Sounds we've got good. one to go this week. That Sounds good. Chapter Let's do ten. It. Talk to you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Bible. Wait, what? Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast so you don't miss a single episode. And you can also find us on all the socials. Just search The Bible. Wait, what? And to find out more about our church, just search C3 Camden, C3 Picton, or C3 Thoreau on the web or on the socials. Thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to talking to you on the next episode of The Bible. Wait, what? Wait, what?